اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله النبي الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Yesterday it was announced that the, the crescent for the Hijjah had been sighted and therefore today is the first day of uh, the Hijjah. And the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, when uh, the moon is sighted or when the, a new month is uh, coming is to recite a dua. It had been reported by a Tirmidhi. كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا رأى الهلال قال the Prophet وسلم, used to say when he would see the crescent would the, اللهم اللهم أهله أهلله علينا باليمن والإيمان والسلامة والإسلام ربي وربك الله Oh Allah bring it over us with blessings and faith and security and Islam my Lord and your Lord is Allah اللهم آمين uh, Of course since today is the first day of the Hijjah by definition, the tenth, the ninth day is the day of Arafah, and the following day is going to be the day of the Eid, Eid al-Adha. So uh, this is based on linking, of course, Eid al-Adha to the Hajj. We know that in the Hajj, there had been set of rules and set of timetable linked to the Hajj actions. So as an example, when we say Yawm Arafah, the day of Arafah, it's, it, yes, it is on the ninth day of the Hijjah, but all Ahadith refer to it, refer to it by name, being the day of Arafah, because the pilgrimage will be there on the Mount of Arafah. And it's it, it, it said that it is Sunnah for other than the pilgrimage, the Hajjij, to fast Arafah. The, those who are witnessing the Hajj, the Hajj are not recommended to fast Arafah. It had been said that Rasulullah was served milk uh, while he was in Arafah. So the Hadith didn't use two names. It didn't refer to the same day in two names, which means that the capacity of that day is being the day in which people are standing in the, in, in the month of Arafah. The day before is called Yawm al People in the eighth day of the Hijjah, some of them will go to Mina in order to prepare for the Hajj. And then in the ninth, they will go to Arafah. And in the tenth, in the evening of the ninth, actually by the, after the sunset, they will leave Arafah to Muzdalifah, to Mina. And in the Fajr, you know, the new day, Yawm al-Nahr is, is coming. So we have, and then Ayam al-Tashriq, the three days of Tashriq in which Qurbani will and the Hadi will be uh, accepted. So this is the Hajj calendar. It's very well established with no gaps. And it is linked to the Hajj. Now, some people say that Rasulullah Sallallahu before uh, the Hajj, when he was in Medina, he uh, observed Eid al-Adha. Yes, he did observe Eid al-Adha and not based on the Hajj, because there was no Hajj. What was there is a distorted copy of the Hajj. Quraysh distorted it. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi didn't follow the distorted uh, rituals Quraysh used to have. So he just counted on his own sighting in Medina, not based on what's going on in Mecca. Actually, Quraysh used not to go to Arab. They would ask other people to go, and they would tell them we, we are the custodians, of Al Haram, so we'll stay here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, changed all of this, get, get the Hajj back to what was uh, used to be done in the days of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So uh, we cannot use the practice of Muhammad sallam in Medina before Hajj had been mandated by the end of you know, the eighth, the ninth year 
of 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 the message in 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 in, in Medina. We can't uh, refer to the period before that as an evidence to de to, to, to detach Eid al-Adha from the Hajj. So it is attached to the Hajj. Now, the, some people will insist on their own citing even an Eid al-Adha. And unfortunately, most cases, their own citing will be linked to the nation state borders. And the, the Saudis actually uh, uh, supported this, promoted this in many fatwas issued by Muslim World League. But uh, those who now are uh, insisting on their own citing, they'll say, well, we shouldn't follow the Saudis now. We are not following the Saudis, we are following the Hajj, the Ahkam Sharia related to the Hajj. It happened that the place is now under certain ruling, certain family ruling. But it doesn't mean that we are following the ruling of uh, or the, the ruling family, but rather we are following the Hajj, which had been established based on uh, many evidences. So uh, the Hajj is different than uh, Ramadan. In Ramadan, you can debate Ittihad al Matala or Ikhtilaf al Matala. You can have your own citing if you see that this is the valid opinion, but not in the Hajj. Uh, although, even, out, even in Ramadan, the most profound opinion is Ittihad al Matala. Because of many things, the discussion of which is beyond than our, uh, my talk today, but one of which is that the moon, and while it orbits the, the, the earth, gets into what is called conjunction time at one night. It doesn't have two conjunction times in the month. So, and if it's not only natural that the moon will not be seen all over the world the first night, it's natural that the moon will be seen in some areas, while in other areas, uh, other people will not, will not see it. So if we see it the next day, actually we are not seeing the new moon. We are seeing the two night old moon. The moon doesn't come twice in, every, in, in the month. Every month comes once. So in reality, there is no ikhtilaf al-matala. It has one matla. We don't see it all over the world, but rather some people see it in different locations as what happens every year. Some people will tell us, no, let's go back to the books of Fukuh, which is fine. Let's go back to the books of Fukuh. What do the books of Fukuh say? Here, I will quote uh, the four schools of Fukuh. We have the Hanafi school, and by the way, the Hanafi school promote Ittihad al -Matala. And I will quote two books from the Hanafi Fukuh al mabsut and Al-Hidayah. And those who are familiar with the Hanafi literature, they know those names. They are very well-known uh, books and their authority is already established in, within the Hanafi school. All of them say that uh, people in the Takbirat, when, while talking about the Takbirat of Eid al-Adha, when to start and when to end, they say, وَالنَّاسُ فِي هَذِهِ التَّكْبِيرَاتِ تَبَعُوا للحاج. People, other than the, the, the Hajjij, and this are following the Hajj. They are not talking about people of Mecca, because the title is باب التكبير في أيام التشريق, chapter about the Takbir in the days of Tashriq for everyone worldwide. The same thing in Al-Hidayah. It says يبدأ, يبدأ في تكبير التشريق بعد صلاة الفجر من يوم عرفة. You start the Takbir after Fajr prayer in the day of Arafah. They didn't say in the ninth day of the Hijjah, they referred to it being the day of Arafah. And in the Shafi'i, Shafi'i school accepts Ikhtilaf al -Matali. Yet, on this issue, the Hanafi, the Shafi'i books say clearly, Al-Nasu Taba'un Lil Hajij. People are following the Hajij. This is mentioned in Mughni uh, al-Muhtaj, the Sirbini, Book of Salah, 
chapter of Salatul Aidain. And in another book, Al Majmu' Sharh al Muhaddab, also it's in the Shafi'i school, they say that uh, why do we stop takbir after uh, the Asr of the third day of Tashrir? He says, What Dalilu ala anahu yaqta'u after the Subh? Uh, sorry, he is talking about the Talbiya. When do the Talbiya stop? And when do we start the takbir? In the Fajr of the day of Nahr, you stop the talbiya and you start the takbir. Like he says, because because people are following the Hajj. This is uh, a, a Shafi'i school. So we have two schools, the Hanafi school and the Shafi'i school, they say clearly that the takbirat are linked to the Hajj. We are following the Hajj. Whenever they stop there, they stop, as an example, the third day, the Asr of the third day of Tashriq, we stop here the third day of Tashriq. And then Al-Mughni by Ibn Qudama, it's in the well-known Hanbali school. He says even, this is what is well-known from Al-Shafi'i, وَعَنِ الشَّافِعِي فِي الْمَشْهُورِ لِأَنَّ النَّاسَ تَبَعُوا لِلْحَجِّ Because people are following the Hajj. وَالْحَجَّاجُ اَقْتَعُونَ التَّلْبِيَةَ مَعَ أَوَّلِ حَصَى and the Hajjis, they stop the Talbiya and they start the Takbir when they throw the first stone in the first day of Yawm al -Nahr. So they linked it to, to the Hajj. Now, if you move to the Maliki school, you go to, as an example, very well-known book in the Maliki school, Mukhtasar Khalil. He says, why do we do this? وَعِلَّةُ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ النَّاسَ تَبَعُوا لِلْحُجَّاجِ the reason, the legal cause for this, the link is because people are following the Hajjij. So these are four quotes, actually not four quotes, six quotes from four, uh, from six books belong to the four schools. Two from the Hanafi, two from the Shafi'i, one from Maliki, one from Hanbali. I didn't quote two and two from the other two schools just because of the uh, time limitation. So here we have, we are very consistent. We have the timetable of the Hajj. We have the ninth day will be the day of Arafah. The next day will be the day of Nahr. And then Ayam Tashriq will be the following three days. Now, if you want to detach yourself from the Hajj calendar, when are you going to fast this day, this year? Are you going to fast in the 20th of July or the 19th? If you are fasting the 20th of July, you are fasting day of Nahr, whether you recognize it or not. If you are fasting Arafah, recognizing Arafah being the 19th day, and then observing the Yawm al Nahr in 21st day of July, then where do you put the 20th day? Here we are, you are creating a gap in the Hajj calendar. So uh, the Hajj calendar has no gap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him, ayyam al-ma'dudat, ayyam al-ma'lumat, aslum ma'lumat. Very well-defined days, very well-known days, very well-known months. No gap. Not at all. But detaching the, the Hajj, the Eid al-Adha from the Hajj, it creates a gap in the Hajj calendar. And it, it will it, it end up with fasting either the day of the Nahr, Yawm al-Nahr, or one day before, but creating a gap in both cases. Because if you, in, in all cases, we are linked to the Hajj. We are not linked to the Saudis. Some people will say, well, this year the Saudis are limiting the Hajj from to those people who are living there. So it's not uh, open to the whole world. That's fine. This means that it is not obligatory upon you this year to go there because you are not allowed because of the, pan the pandemic or because the pandemic is used as an excuse. That's not the point now. But uh, you have a, a reason 
why don't you uh, go to the Hajj? But this does not mean that you disturb the Hajj calendar at all. Some people will say that we have to be consistent if we are following uh, in Ramadan, we have to follow the Matal in the Hajj. No, they are two different masalas. Here we are following the Hajj because of many evidences, as what we mentioned. Not because we like to switch from, from one masala view to another uh, masala. It's not up to us to switch. Even, but even, even if it is, even if you are following the Ikhtilaf al you are allowed to abandon your view for the sake of the unity of Muslims. We have enough division now, nowadays. And let's keep trying to build the unity of, of, of Muslim Ummah. Uh, so uh, make sure that we are not linking the Hajj to a nation state border. We are not observing the, ha the Eid al Adha on our own sighting following the fatwa of uh, Muslim World League or uh, the, the official religious establishment in Saudi Arabia. Let's link it to the Hajj based on the evidences. And Alhamdulillah, locally speaking, uh, here it had been cited last night in California. It had been cited in Florida. It had been cited in, in Texas. It had been cited in Chicago. So it's covering the three uh, time zone in North America. So you cannot say, I want to follow my own matla. You have no excuse. Because I was reading in some sites, they are saying we do, it's not being seen. So tomorrow is the beginning of the Hijjah because we don't consider Pacific time zone. Well, it had been seen in the Eastern time zone in Florida. It had been seen in the middle time zone, you know, on, uh, and in the Western time zone, Pacific. So it, again, it had been seen in California. It had been seen in Texas. It had been seen in Chicago. It had been seen in Florida, which is Eastern time zone. So let's keep thinking as one body and go beyond then the uh, rigidity of some people who think that they are sticking to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If you would stick to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, follow what uh, the Sahaba did, because as an example, uh, in the Maliki school, he is quoting Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar from the Sahaba. He says, يَبْدَأُ التَّكْبِيرُ عَقِبَ صَلَاةُ الظُّهُرِ يَوْمَ النَّحْرِ خَلْفَ الصَّلَوَاتِ كُلِّهَا حَتَّى يَنْتَهِ إِلَى صَلَاةِ الصُّبْحِ مِنْ آخِرِ أَيَامِ التَّشْرِيرِ As an example, you start the takbir, those who are not in the hajj, after the prayer of Dhuhr, this is in the Malik school, in the uh, Dhuhr prayer from the day of Nahr, after each prayer, until the Fajr prayer of the last day of the tashriq, as it had been reported from Ibn Umar and uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Allahumma rada anhum from both. And the legal cause for, for this is that people are followers of the, the Hajjis. So they are setting the calendar, not we. We are following them. And the, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar from the Sahaba. And uh, uh, all, all, all other schools, yani, they are quoting us how did people use uh, to, to, to act. In, uh, as an example, in Al-Babsut, he says, it's reported, اتفق المشايخ من الصحابة عمر وعلي وبن مسعود رضي الله عنهم أنه يبدأ بالتكبير من صلاة الغدات يوم عرفة. You start the takbir by the, from the Fajr prayer uh, because the talbiyah stops uh, from the day of Arafah. وَبِهِ أَخَذَ عُلَمَاءُنَا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ فِي ظَاهِرِ الرِّوَايَةِ 
the ones who are familiar with the Hanafi fiqh, they know what does it mean. Kutub Zahir al-Riwaya are accepting it, which is the, are the, the basis for the Hanafi fiqh. All Hanafi fiqh goes back to Kutub Zahir al-Riwaya, the books of Zahir al-Riwaya, known as this. وَالنَّاسُ فِي هَذِي التَّكْبِرَاتِ تَبَعُوا لِلْحَاجِ This is an al-mabsoot, Hanafi book. And people in this are following the hajjis. So I hope that I didn't uh, repeat myself, but I, it, actually this can never be overemphasized because no matter which book you are reading, whether it's Hanafi, which is following Ittihad al or Shafi'i, which is following Ikhtilaf al they you will read the same sentence. And Nasu Taba'an al Hajj. People are following the Hajj. This, this sentence is read all over all books. So we have to keep this in mind. Now, there, is, there are some Sunan re reported uh, regarding the, the, these days. We ha these days are very valuable days. Uh, it's recommended to increase from our Salah, from our Takbirat, even actually in general Takbir, yeah. not, not particular Takbir, not Takbir Muqayyad. Uh, if you uh, one one issue is recommended is to have the qurbani or the udhiya in the Hanafi school. This is a wajib. In all other schools, it is sunnah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you follow any school you want. If you are Hanafi, you want to follow the Hanafi. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Hanafi school is very uh, reliable school. And Imam Shafi'i describes Imam Abu Hanifa saying, People are depending on Abu Hanifa and the fiqh. If you want to follow the Shafi'i school, that's fine. Uh, but also, uh, just today and yesterday, I received a couple of questions. If you want to offer Udhiya or Qurbani, is it true that you are not allowed to cut from your hair or to, or to cut your nail? No, it's not true. You are not in a state of ihram. You still uh, are dressed regular clothing. It's recommended not to cut your hair or the nail, but it's not a mandatory. And those 10 days, you are not in the state of ihram because if you are in the state of ihram, you cannot e e even be dressed like this. You have to, you know, the, the two pieces for men for the ihram. You cannot uh, get involved in a, in a marriage uh, contract uh, if you are in the state of ihram. So this is not ihram. These are sunnas recommended for those who want to make udhiya. And it's, uh, it's, it's not a must to abide by it. Uh, so uh, let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will provide us with the right vision, with the right leadership that will unite Muslim Ummah so that we, this issue will not keep coming up every year. Till we are united, next year we'll say the same thing. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma hayi ilana min amrina rashida. Uh, provide us with the right vision, or oh Allah provide for this ummah whatever uh, gives izzah and dignity to the people who are obeying the hukum shari and gives guidance to those who decided not to obey. May Allah guide them, may Allah open their hearts to the truth, to the haqq. May Allah keep us on the path of guidance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us. And I wouldn't also uh, forget the need to focus on also our institutions. Uh, masajid, schools, institutions, if you can help them, inshallah, Rabbil Ameen, they should be helped. And the Amal Salih in these days is, inshallah, Rabbil Ameen, highly rewarded. So, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us all and to unite us all and to guide us all. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.